All right, so now we begin system of linear equations, which is our unit five, and this is going to be the system of equations unit where we look at graphing, we look at the algebraic versions, and then we look at applications of systems of equations. So starting off with the first lesson, which is going to be looking at graphing, we're going to take equations or a system of equations and then figure out what does it mean to be a solution according to if we take these equations and then graph them. So in the first example, they say the Smith family and Harper family are going to a book fair raising money for charity. Miss Smith pays the entrance fee of 11 for three adults and one child, and Miss Harper pays the entry fee of $12 for two adults and three children. So we see this situation of total cost and how many people are coming along on this. Now, with this, we have two equations, one that is 3x plus y equals 11, representing the first scenario, or Miss Smith's entry fees paid, and then we look at the next one, and it is for Miss Harper, and she pays $12, that includes 2x plus 3y. Now, they say draw these things without uh, graphing technology. What we're going to do is, in order to re represent these on a graph, I'm going to take each of the equations and isolate them in terms of y equals mx plus b, or slope-intercept form. So the first one is going to be 3x plus y is equal to 11. The next one will be 2x plus 3y is equal to 12. We're going to take both these equations and isolate for y. Well, to isolate for y in the first one, I'm just going to take 3x and subtract it from both sides, and this will give me one equation of y is equal to negative 3x plus 11. So there's our first equation. The second equation is going to be we're going to subtract our 2x from both sides. This is going to become 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 12. Lastly, I need to divide both sides by the 3 here, and so we're going to get a, a statement of y is equal to negative 2x over 3, and then 12 over 3 is equal to, in this case, plus 4. There's our second equation. Now, we're going to read the information from these because we know in slope-intercept form, we know not only know slope, but the y-intercept. So looking at the first equation, we're going to map this out using blue. I go to my graph, and I know that y equals negative 3x plus 11. 11 is the y-intercept, so I'm going to put a point here. The slope is negative 3 over 1, so I'm going to go down 3 units, 1, 2, 3, over 1. And that's going to be one point. Down 3, over 1, that's another point. Down 3, over 1, that's another point. And then finally, down 3, over 1, there's another point. And what we can do is draw a line connecting through this and then put arrows on the end because they didn't say anything about domain and range. Now, we're going to do the exact same thing, but label it in red for our second equation, y equals negative 2x over 3 plus 4. The y-intercept is 4, so I'm going to put a dot here. I'm then going to go up 2 over 3, or in the actual reverse direction because we know it's a negative slope, so let me actually go back on this, down 2 over 3 units, so I'm going to put a dot here, down 3, or down 2 over 3 units because we know it's a rise of negative 2 over by 3 units. I'm going to draw a line through this with arrows on the end. Perfect. Now, I want to label my intersection point, which occurs right here. This is what we call the solution to the system or their intersection point. So the solution is representing where these two lines cross over. That occurs at 3 for x, 2 for y. There we go. Okay. Now, we've drawn it. We've now answered the question of what is the intersection point, which is for B, the intersection is at 3 for X, 2 for Y. And if we wanted to look at this, the, what this represents in terms of the context of this problem is if X is represented by 3, Y is represented by 2, that means that if we go back up to the context of our equation here, it looks like that if we reread the uh, original line, it says that Miss Smith P, uh, pays $11, and that includes three adults and one child, meaning if I look at my equation, X is represented by the adult fee, Y is represented by the child fee, so it is $3 for adults and $2 for children. So we say X equals 3, and therefore, this means that adults are $3, and then the child, which is represented by Y, is 2, and this is the cost for each child. Child cost is $2. There we go. So we can pull this apart and say, well, the actual, what this equals to in terms of the context is where they intersect for both of these situations, both families are paying these fees for adults and children, their intersection point represents what the cost is for both of these families in terms of the adults and child. All right, now swiping over to the next page here, we call this a system of equations where the solution to any system of equations is represented in terms of an X and Y or 
a certain amount of ordered pairs as we're going to come to know in the next couple lessons. And this is the point of intersection between the two lines. Now we could look at this example just to reinforce that. If I look at the intersection of that, the intersection occurs right here. And in terms of an ordered pair, this is two for X, negative one for Y. And so as a solution, we would say that it has a solution of X being two, Y being negative one. And as an ordered pair, it would be two and negative one, just like we put on the graph there. So this is really, really common with this type of lesson or this type of system of equations is we're gonna get some sort of overlap and that overlap or intersection represents the solution. And just make sure that we're putting it in terms of an ordered pair, because this represents what we're gonna come to know as a full solution. Really, really important. If I ever talk about this in class, a full solution is an XY ordered pair. Now consider the system of equations below, graph the system without using technology. Again, what we're gonna have to do is convert these into Y equals MX plus B. So I'm gonna go 2X plus Y, is equal to two, and my second equation is x minus three y, and I'm gonna redo that three there. Redo this three as three y is equal to 15, there we go. I'm gonna isolate for y on our first equation, meaning I'm gonna subtract two x from both sides, giving me y is equal to negative two x plus two. There we go, highlight this one. And then I'm gonna go over to my other equation, isolate for y. To do this, I'm gonna subtract away x, when I subtract away x, I get 3y, or negative 3y more specifically, is equal to negative x plus 15. I'm going to divide both sides by that negative 3 here. And when I divide both sides by negative 3, I get y is equal to x divided by 3, and then 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. There we go. There's my second equation. Now, with the two equations, we know we can put these on the graph because in terms of y equals mx plus b, I have my slope. I have my y-intercepts, so that's enough information here. What I'm gonna do is the same thing I did on the previous example, one in blue, one in red, and so the one in blue here is gonna be a y-intercept at two with a slope of negative two, or down two over one, down two over one, down two over one, there we go. So I have enough points that I can connect a line here because ideally you wanna try and get three or more points as a way to create an accurate line now, in terms of the red line, I'm going to go down to negative 5, which is our y-intercept or our b value, and the slope of this one is 1 over 3, so I'm going to go up 1 over 3 units, up 1 over 3 units, and that's going to give me 3 or more points. I can connect them with an accurate line here, and now the solution to this occurs right here at the black line or the intersection. This intersection occurs at, for the x value, positive 3, I should say, not a negative, positive three, and then we go down by four units. So three and negative four represents the solution to this system of equations. And so we're gonna put state the system or state the solution to the system. This is gonna be three and negative four in brackets like this. Algebraically verify the solution by replacing the values in the original equations. Well, here's what that means is I'm gonna go back up to my originals and say, well, two X plus Y must be equal to two Thus, when I plug in x and y, I get two times three plus negative four. This should be equal to two. And two times three is six, minus four is definitely a two in this case. So we say two is equal to two, and left-hand side equals right-hand side. This is really common notation saying that, yes, this does work. We also wanna verify for the other equation, x minus three y is equal to 15. Well, x we know is three, minus three times negative four, this is equal to 15, three minus negative 12, well, that's like three plus 12, we get 15 equals 15. And yes, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And we've shown or verified that buzzword right here or that key word that's in the math vocabulary. Verify that solution. To verify it means both sides of the equation should be equal. All right, moving to our next page here. Well, they're actually gonna walk you through putting these into a graphing calculator. I would recommend you do this on your own time. Now, putting these into your graphing calculator, even if you want to see me in tutorials about this, that'd be a really good idea. It's pretty easy to follow and it, you learn it very fast. It's not a necessary skill for the grade 10 curriculum. For grade 11 though, you're gonna do a ton of this. Just know that it is an easy skill to pick up and I may demonstrate it throughout the unit at certain times, but for now, I'm not gonna go through this in detail. We're just gonna leave it as is. And we're actually gonna leave the next couple examples because not only is this a redo problem, so all of this is actually a redo of our first problem, but the one on our next page here is one that could only be done if we had graphing calculator skills 
or algebraic skills, which are going to come later in this unit. So what we're going to do is just say that if you want to go through these and in terms of finding X and Y intercepts or in finding the intercept or finding these graphically, the instructions are all here. They're very clear. You might need a little help if you have the Casio calculator. But like I said, these things you can actually pick up very, very quickly. The major skill we wanted to take care of was could we put equations or a system in terms of y equals mx plus b. That is the critical skill. And then can we graph that and find out some intersection by purely graphing these things? That was the major uh, skill we wanted to learn. And you're gonna see that on the assignment and you're gonna see that on your unit test or even the quizzes. So when you go to do your assignments, just be aware that if it says anything around the graphing calculator, just notice that that's all bonus for this year. But if you can do ones like this first problem here, where you actually are gonna plot the graph, that's perfect. And where you're gonna rearrange it in terms of slope y-intercept.